sadness of soul can i say this to you where there is bitterness there is barrenness you cannot be a person who is constantly unhappy constantly bitter and be productive bitterness has a negative atmosphere big bitterness is anti-harvest it 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 repairs harvest anyone you see that's in bitterness of soul is looking for is attracting barrenness you cannot job was speaking in job 21 25 he said as one diet in bitterness even if a child come the child can't stay the child goes because you are bitter many have gone through miscarriage lots of miscarriage because of bitterness am i communicating here because you are bitter you are unhappy you are sad you are depressed you are always down you are always broken hearted so the enemy is capitalizing on that and holding that as a local standee on why you should not be pregnant the bible says in hebrews chapter 12 verse 15 lest any root of bitterness springing up causing trouble anywhere there is bitterness trouble cannot be escaped nobody who is bitter can avoid or escape trouble Ephesians chapter 4 verse 31 say let us put away bitterness malice so many are in bitterness so many are in malice their heart is heavy and the heaviness of their heart is the heaviness of their unfruitfulness anytime you begin to allow the devil make you bitter make you sad fruitfulness has an atmosphere fruitfulness has an atmosphere anytime that atmosphere of unfruitfulness which is bitterness is in view then fruitfulness can never be in place fruitfulness has an atmosphere it has an atmosphere there are several things that cause unforgiveness that cause barrenness and bitterness rather one of them is unforgiveness when you have unforgiveness in your heart you are it sponsors bitterness there are people that say it's okay but they cannot let go there are women anytime they see their husband it reminds them of something and so long that is there that is what the enemy is holding as a weapon satan has weaponized that bitterness that unforgiveness anytime you are crying to god for a child satan comes to accuse you he says she has not forgiven an atmosphere that's light an atmosphere where there is joy you cannot be joyful and be unfruitful you can't be joyful and be unfruitful when you have unforgiving spirit you hardly let go satan takes advantage of that another thing that causes be end of the party the man or the woman is bitter because she or he feels deceived there are women who have entered into marriages only to enter before they find out some things their husband never told them by reason of that they are bitter some men entered homes and found out something their wife never mentioned to them and by reason of that they are bitter and anytime they lift up their hands to say god i want a child sit and say where yeah, this is what i have because the bible calls him an accuser of the brethren satan is not powerful satan is strategic what satan does is to bring up an accusation against you he brings up an accusation say god by reason of this thing because in the spirit the law of the spirit in the in the realm of the spirit there's the law of transaction he says lord this is the reason why this person should not be fruitful so bitterness can come when either of the party feels deceived you feel you enter into a home and enter into a marriage where you didn't know the whole truth only for you to marry that woman or marry that man and you began to find out a lot of things and your heart is breaking every day now you're already in the marriage you're already in there you're already in there why not let go many can never be fruitful because they can't forgive they feel deceived so they are bitter some are bitter because they feel maltreated you feel the treatment you are getting from your wife or from your husband is a wrong treat you are maltreated so you're in pain you feel maltreated so because of that maltreatment you are feeling dejected so you are bitter am i talking to somebody here yeah? you are bitter because any little statement insults abuses causes so your heart is heavy sometimes you don't even know if to pray for the man or to pray against him any little thing you cannot have a conversation never sometimes you are saying people tell you why not you wait for when he's in a good mood you know your husband he doesn't have a mood you don't know when he's in a good mood 
sometimes he's smiling you want to take advantage of that time to talk to him what you get is a is a response that makes you feel like hanging yourself when you are up that around you you feel maltreated ill-treated wrongly treated the enemy takes advantage of that maltreatment you see the enemy, the ultimate of that attack or that action or that attitude is to make you bitter which now culminates in keeping you barren you must rejoice that's why it's called joy it's not called happiness happiness is a function of happening when something happens you are happy but joy is a function of an overwhelming presence of the holy spirit the bible says in philippians 4 verse 4 rejoice in the lord always and again i say rejoice joy comes in even when there is nothing for you to be excited about in Isaiah chapter 12 verse 3 say with joy shall we draw water from the wells of salvation be joyful tell somebody be joyful I can hear you I can hear you bitterness the first thing I say cause bitterness unforgiveness feeling deceived maltreatment another thing that causes bitterness is when people are offended with God this one mainly is a, is a, is a weapon set that uses against people who are old time believers pastors wives leaders in church are always victims of this you are the wife of a pastor you are the wife of a head of department in your church you are the wife of a coordinator you have served god for a long time you are expected this thing to happen it has not happened so you are now offended in god some people are bitter 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 against god some people are keeping malice with god is that bad some are keeping malice father why 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 my husband prays for people they are fruitful i have agreed with brothers and sisters they are fruitful but why am i not fruitful? why 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 so they are angry with god they are angry they are angry listen to me anybody who is the highest level of of pride and arrogance is to be offended with god is the highest level of pride god why that is what wasted john the baptist matthew chapter 11 from verse 3 down are you the one or should we expect another and god said to go and tell him blessed is the man that is not offended in me many are angry with god i'm a christian i've prayed hands have been laid on me they have prayed for me i don't have a child lord why lord why i don't feel like going to church anymore i don't feel like serving god anymore because i've prayed and prayed lord why that's it that's it you see him you can see her she does not even believe in you keep the child she's not even sure or convinced keep the child that is the ministry of the devil an accuser the brethren an accuser i had a loud voice saying revelation 12 verse 10 i had a loud voice saying now salvation is come salvation came strength came the kingdom of god of our god and the power of his christ for the accuser of the brethren is cast down so when satan was cast down from heaven he was giving a ministry to the brethren god gave you a ministry of reconciliation second corinthians 5 18 so also he gave satan the ministry as he's as you are doing your ministry he's doing his own his own ministry is to accuse you it's an accuser of the brethren to tell god there's no reason and no need the, the bible calls god jesus our advocate an advocate is a lawyer that stands for you in defense so also now for you to have a defense it means there's somebody that's prosecuting you all right you cannot have somebody in defense for you until there is a prosecutor is that understood so the enemy stands to prosecute you that's why jesus stands as your advocate many are offended in god many are angry that's one weapon of the devil the devil weaponizes that some are depressed by reason of prolonged waiting that also causes bitterness they have waited for a long time Sarah waited for 25 years. Some of you may have waited for 30 years, 40 years. Sarah at 90 became fruitful. 
So that tells me, do you have a 90 year old person here? Do you have a 90 year old person here? I don't think so. So even if you are 89, you, have, you can be pregnant. Your pregnancy now at this age will not break any record. Because we have one that's broken record. She was pregnant at 90. At 90, she has crossed menopause. I didn't say she has entered. She has crossed. Is men know nothing? Men know finish. Men know. Men know disappeared. Men know exhausted. She's menoless. There's no men know anything there. I didn't say she has entered. She has crossed. Have you seen a 90 year old woman? She's bent, twisted. That's not just a grandmother. That's not a great grandmother. That's a great, great grandmother. She was pregnant. She went through the motions of pregnancy at 90. Gave birth without a cesarean session. No miscarriage, no miscarriage, no overcarriage, no undercarriage. She was pregnant till full time. Gave birth. So why are you depressed that you have waited for too long? Why are you depressed that you have been waiting and believing God to give you a child? The child never came. Stop the bitterness. Stop being bitter and tell God you love him. Tell him you have waited. You believe that he will do it for you. Tell him you know he's too faithful to fail. Tell him you know he's the God that changeth not. Tell him you know he's the almighty. Don't let the devil tell you that it's almost over or it's over. Tell God you know that your waiting time is not your wasting time. You have waited for him. You didn't waste your time. Those who serve God don't waste time. They invest time. They invest their time in God. Okay, so pressure. Another cause <laughs> of bitterness. This one is demonically fired. I call it demonic sadness. There's nothing making you angry. You can't pinpoint your hand on why you are angry. You are just angry. This form of anger is very nebulous. Very uncertain. There are people that sit down, they are just sad. They are permanently sad. Sad. Why are you angry? Say, I don't know. Have you seen people who cry and they can't tell you why they are crying? Say, I just feel like crying just to let it out. What is inside you that you are letting out? Say, please, just allow me to cry. Just allow me. There, there are days like that, I just feel like crying. And now you have accepted that as a lifestyle. But you can just sit down and just cry child of god that is demonic is not of god is not of god see these my tears are good tears i just feel like crying no, don't no, don't don't bother me let me just let it out once you have the holy ghost it makes you joyful that's the first concert the first major onslaught of the enemy to sponsor unfruitfulness in the life of people to make them bitter the bible says, anna anna was bitter she was bitter. She was in bitterness of soul. First Samuel chapter 1 verse 10. Bitterness of soul. Do you know after the prayer, she did not say amen. No. If you read verse 18, the Bible says her countenance was no more sad. Her countenance. First Samuel 1 18. She said, let the hand may find grace in thy side. So the woman went away and did it. And her countenance was no more sad. Before, it, before I pray for us today, for three minutes, you are going to dance the kind of dance you have never danced. That's what the Holy Spirit told me. He said, that's the prescription. The more you dance, the faster you take in. So all of those, all of those, um, how do I call it now? Those piousness. That ambience of, of calmness you carry. You won't do that now. You are going to rejoice for a couple of minutes. Dance before him. Rejoice before him. And as you are doing that, the power will come. The glory of the highest will overshadow you. And you shall be fruitful. The second thing that sponsors of fruitfulness is prayerlessness. Prayerlessness. The Bible says in Genesis 25, 21 that Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife. In other words, Isaac prayed. Prayed. 
interceded for his wife and the lord was entreated for him the lord was entreated of him because why he spent time to pray 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 we discovered there's only one woman that was barren the whole scripture. We all know her. Her name is Micah. Second Samuel 6 23. Micah was barren till the day of her death. Micah's story is a very humorous one. When David had killed Goliath, David killed Goliath, and Saul wanted to bring his daughter called Merab to Micah. To David to marry. And Merab was given to Merab was given to a man called Adriel. And as Merab married Adriel. They had to bring Saul head that his daughter called Michal had fallen in love with David. So he said, good. This is a good plan. By reason of my giving her to David, she will become a snare. And he gave her to David. Before he gave her to David, he told David to go out that he wants the foreskin. You know what the foreskin is, right? You know what foreskin is? Okay. He wants the foreskin, 100 foreskins of the Philistine. First Samuel 18, 25 and in verse 27, the Bible says David provided it. The reason he asked for a hundred first kings was that he knew that if the David attempt to get that from these men, they will kill him. It was not an assignment that he expected a positive result. But David brought the hundred first kings. And he got married to Michael. Michael was a woman who loved David and David loved her. Most time when people talk about Michael, they don't talk about her good side. They condemn her as one woman that did evil no she slided into evil gradually she was not originally evil when the father wanted to kill david she told david my father wants to kill you first samuel 19 verse 12 my father wants to kill you she helped david escape through the window david escaped and in verse 13 what she did was when the men were coming to the house she put something like an image on the bed and put pillows by the image so when they came they felt that was david not knowing it was an image she covered with a cloth david had escaped that's how much she loved david that's how much she loved david so they were both in love they loved each other by reason of what happened saul felt that michael his daughter had mocked him so he gave michael to somebody else when david became king that's one of the first things david collected back hallelujah when David became king, that was the first, the first thing. David became, David became king when he ascended the throne in 2 Samuel chapter 2. In chapter 3, in 2 Samuel 3 verse 13, he said, bring back my wife. You will not see my face until you bring my wife back. Bring back my wife that you took from me. And he said, well, I will make a league with thee. But one thing I require of thee, that is, thou shalt not see my face, except thou first bring my cars my car saw's daughter when thou comest to see my face if you are coming for us to have this agreement my wife that the father took bring her back you know people look down on you and look down on your marriage when god has not blessed you when god blesses you when god blesses you you control your home am i talking to somebody here you control your home people can look down on you and despise you despise your husband despise your wife when god has not smiled on you today heaven will smile on you my god you see i was studying scripture and i discovered that my car was the only woman that didn't have a baby not that there were no children around her she grew up let me show you in second samuel 21 first samuel 21 verse 8 first samuel 21 verse 8 First Samuel, second Samuel, second Samuel 21, 8. Yeah. Let me show you something. Second Samuel 21, verse 8. And the king took sons of Rispa and Hea, whose whom she bare unto Saul, Ammoni and Mephibosheth. And the five sons of Michael, the daughter of Saul, whom she brought up for Adriel, the son of Basilia, the Melotatite. The five sons of Michael. The daughter of Saul. Does that confuse you a bit? Does that confuse you? The Bible says, My car had no child till she died. 
Now the Bible says the five sons of Micah, the daughter of Saul, whom she brought up for Adriel, they were not her children. She raised them up for somebody. Who was Adriel? First Samuel 18, 19. That was the lady that her elder sister was giving to the man. And it came to pass at the time Merab, Saul's daughter, would have been given to David. That she was given to Adriel. So Saul had the first daughter. It was the second daughter that David married. The first daughter was betrothed to David. But Saul gave that girl to somebody else. And gave Michael to her. The woman got married to the man. Had five sons. She died. And her sister Michael spent all her life taking care of her five children. Many of you are spending money taking care of other people's children. But that shall not happen anymore. You have invested paid fees for people's children. And they are happy. Some of them are even responsible or even have hands in the reason why you don't have yours. But today God said enough is enough. David never prayed for her. Never interceded for her. My color, God struck her because she had no value for divine presence. In 2 Samuel 6 16, the Bible says the ark of God was returned to the city of David. And David began to dance before the Lord, dance before the Lord. The ark of God speaks of the presence of God. God was speaking to Moses in Exodus 33, verse 14. He said, My presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. The presence of God guarantees rest. In Job chapter, Job chapter 2, verse 7, Job chapter 1, verse 12, he said, And Satan left the presence of God. Job 2 7, Job 1 12. The Bible says, Psalm 139, verse 17. Where with shall I go from thy presence? Where shall I flee from thy spirit? In Psalm 16, 11, Thou will show me the path of life, for in thy presence there is fullness of joy at thy right hand are pleasures evermore. In Psalm 68, 1 and 2, Let God arise, let his enemies be scattered, let them that hate him flee before him. He says, As chaff is, as smoke is driven before the wind, so drive them away, as wax melts before the fire. So let the wicked melt before the presence of our God. Somebody say, I need his presence. I can't hear you say, I need his presence. His presence brings his presence. His presence brings his present. When God's presence hits a man, God gives him a present. God's presence settles crisis. God's presence settles crisis. The biggest pain the man felt the first major error man committed was that man was driven from the presence of God. Man was driven. My car didn't value the presence of God. As the ark came, David was dancing, rejoicing. And my car despised David in the heart. Woman, when you begin to question your husband's commitment and you feel that he's too committed to God, God can close your womb. When you feel your husband carry church on his head, God can close your womb. You feel your husband is giving too much to church. You are now complaining. He has given too much. God said, no problem. Let him keep what he has. Me, I will keep what I have. She felt David's was too much. You should be happy as a lady when your husband loves God. You should be happy as a man when your wife is, 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 is addicted to God. She, she despised the husband in her heart. See what kind of man? What is this? The man was dancing like a child. And the Bible says, dancing is scared fellow. Became naked before God. And the wife felt bad. She felt embarrassed. She felt embarrassed. When the husband came, she said to him, you, look, look at you. The Bible says in verse 16, the ark of the Lord came to the city of David. Micah saw his daughter and looked through the window and saw the king leaping and dancing before God. And she despised him in our heart verse 17 verse 17 and they brought the ark of God okay go to verse 18 19 20 then David returned to bless his household and Micah the daughter of Saul came out to meet David and said how glorious was the king of Israel who uncovered 
sit sarcasm how glorious how wonderful man you are such a great king you were naked in public today how glorious what is who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids of his servant david was naked before everybody she was only conscious of the women around you are not for what i'm saying she was not conscious of the men she was saying look at the way you embarrass yourself before those women but there were men there that also shows you an attribute she had a suspicious attribute yeah many of us are like that you have made yourself a cid your husband is going anywhere you are monitoring him you will kill yourself oh. you are monitoring where are you going where are you coming from where are you going where are you coming from look at what happened to micah let's read it together how glorious was the king of Israel today who uncovered himself in the eyes of the maidens nobody can live with you nobody the young girl that has left you drove her the grown up one you drove her so there should be peace your husband brought an elderly woman to the house the only day the woman sat down and was advising your husband about life you suspected them you drove her so nobody is staying in your house your house is hostile the environment is hostile he said you have danced naked before and the bible said because of that he said look at what he said handmaids of the servant as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovered himself you talk to a man like that who god has placed as your head you call him shameless verse 21 i like the response i like the response David said to Michael, it was before the Lord. This my nakedness is not before you. My dance was not to you. It was because the Lord, because of the Lord, who chose me before thy father. I like that. Who chose me before thy father? And before all his house. In other words, when he came back, the wife said, Look at you, shameless man. You were dancing, you were naked, your clothes fell off. You are shameless. He said, My wife, no vex, so please forgive me. Oh, it is God that rejected your father and made me king. Oh, it is God that said your father is not qualified. If your father danced like this and was naked, he would have seen the king. But your father was too arrogant in the midst of praise. He's very calculated, behaving with so much protocol like a king. But me, I remember that I was a frustrated shepherd boy. I had nothing. I was a nobody. Nobody knew me. I'm not trained in the army. I came at 17. I brought down Goliath. And at 30, God has made me king. Oh. And because of that which he said, the Bible said the Lord closed that womb. Verse 20, bring up 22 and 23. And I will be yet more vile than those. In other words, I have not started being naked. The next one I will do. I will be base in my own sight. In my own sight. I will do more than I will serve God more than this. I will go reckless in his presence. I will give my all to him. So long in my sight, my conscience knows I'm doing the right thing. He said, And the maid servant which thou hast spoken of, of them I shall be had in honor those who think are despising me now you're so, you'll be surprised for the, that the honor they have given to me by reason of my dancing before the Lord verse 23 therefore meaning because of this attitude therefore the late Archbishop said anytime you see therefore know it is there for something say therefore means it is there for something therefore therefore meaning because of this by reason of this action my car had no child God said for despising your husband by many elements and many attributes disrespect suspicion familiarity with God's anointing he says no child there are many women today the reason they are not fruitful is they are, they are challenging their husband's service to God there isn't some men why they are not fruitful they are challenging their wife's service to god look at the way you're of the department if i leave that department god say what my daughter where yeah, she's serving me and god gets angry so that's the prayer we're praying 
prayer of mercy. Not any way my action or inaction or reaction has questioned the service of my spouse to you. Show me mercy. Anyway, my action, my reaction, or my inaction has questioned the service of my spouse to you. Show me mercy. Your husband gave a car to church. From that day, there's this anger you have in your heart. There's this anger for a car your husband gave. And yet there are wives who are pushing their husband to build church, churches. They are provoking him to do more for God. Just a car. You have not let go. You are angry. You are offended. Anyway, my action, my inaction, my reaction has questioned the service of my spouse to you. Oh Lord, show me mercy. Can we take that prayer before we praise God? Thank you for watching Udeme Fruitful Channel.